Listen, what can we learn from Colorado versus Colorado State? Great game, classic and all that. But we got Oregon and USC coming up. This is going to be a quick video. All I want to tell on the video to everybody hating on Deion Sanders and them right now, keep hating. But what I would say is congratulations to all the great men and women at Boulder, Colorado right now for improving your season, improving your, your atmosphere, and also the back and forth you got with the Rams. You made it a notoriety uh, um, rivalry again. But here's the thing, just being honest. Any uh, any slight criticisms I say in this video is with respect and humbleness and love. Dion and the team needs to stop taking everything personal. Let us, the bloggers and the people, talk about it for you. Let us and the bloggers bring it up. You know what I mean? Dion needs to stop telling his players it's personal. Every game can't be personal, man. I think there was too much pressure on those kids to perform over there at Colorado. You know what I'm saying? In Boulder, I think the magnitude of them loving Dion so much, they have the weight of the world on their shoulder when Dion say it's personal. The coach threw a slight at you, Dion, not your guys, not your team. So I personally feel like everything you shouldn't try to galvanize the dudes and the team members, you know, towards a personal situation. Because when things get too personal, you can have mistakes. Your focus is not clearly there because the ammunition is getting a little bit too much and it's, it's, it's getting a little bit heavy. And I feel like just talk to your team and let them know that one thing that nobody likes them and that's it. You feel me? You don't have to make every game a personal situation, not because I have a problem with it. I love it. I love what Prime brings, but it's just more of I knew this might have happened. Like, you know, the coach kind of played chess with Dion. Jay Norvell, that is, the coach of Colorado Rams. He played chess with Dion. He knew Dion had the better talent. But if you bring hot blood into it, everybody becomes equal. It's the equalizer. No pun intended with, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, uh, Denzel Washington. But I'm just being honest. It's an equal playing field. It becomes you know, two regular guys, when you take all out the talent aspect of it, you take out the strategic plan and it's just, we going to beat you up type of attitudes. You know, it's crucial mistakes are being made. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of situations were, was exposed yesterday, last night, but these are things that I'm glad that Dion and the guys, you know, got to see exposed last night rather than versus USC, rather than versus Bo Nix in Oregon. I really want to see a dominating performance against USC and Oregon. I Look, I'll take both wins if we can beat USC and Oregon, but I'm praying that the team can beat at least one of them because I'm not going to talk bad about Oregon, nor am I going to talk bad about USC. Great games all around. You know what I mean? I just want to see a fair playing game. I love Shador, what he has, but I don't think no way, absolutely no way in hell your starting quarterback or any of your quarterbacks or your leadership positions need to be on that playing field and cussing out the guys. This is not the Miami Hurricanes of the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. Let's just be honest. This is not that. This Colorado versus Colorado State game almost had an atmosphere of FSU versus Miami or Florida Gators, but these are not the same players. You can't have your starting quarterback focusing on doing the watch thing. I think Shador Sanders need to lose the watch, the pregame rituals and focus on the game plan. I'm not saying he's not focusing on it. You just don't need to be focusing on things that has nothing to do with the game. My personal opinion, not that I'm being, you know, criticizing the way Lee Corso and these guys do. I just love them enough and want to see them win. I can clearly see that adds a, another microscope to what you guys already have. It's Colorado Buffaloes versus the world. You don't need Colorado Buffaloes versus themselves because that's what's going. Um, that's what happened last night. They literally played against themselves and they almost lost. They need to focus on the prize and remember what the main mission is, is to rebuild Colorado Buffaloes. You know, I mean, if you can get a national championship your first year, yeah, everybody's going to celebrate, but that shouldn't be the goal. The goal should be only on improving everything, improving the mindsets, improving the atmosphere, and trying to gain, you know, the accolades after that. But the main focal point should be focusing on thyself. What I seen yesterday was a case of, we forgot a lot of our 
or, or peer points. We forgot a lot about our prepositions to this, man. And it's like, you know, to repetitions make you have the better version of yourself. But this version right here was a bad version of themselves. I didn't see anything to conclude a great performance other than it was a great game. You know, I, well, it was a great performance. I don't see anything to conclude. It was something to talk down on the opposing force, such as Colorado Rams. But it was a great performance. It was a great football game. But there's a lot of naysayers who was going to say, Colorado Buffalo should have trampled against Colorado State. But, you know, the Buffaloes only won one game last year. So if you think about it, it's still a win. Highly competitive game, highly competitive atmosphere in the in those stadiums. Tickets are being sold out. And guess what, guys? After all those myths have that Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffalo football teams had yesterday, guess what? They're still undefeated. And that's what the naysayers are not going to talk about. I'm just more looking at more surprises and and I'm coming back into reality a little bit more and understanding this is a new team. I got caught up in the hype and you're, you know, you feel like every single game they're going to blow out every opponent. They're going to win every single game. I still feel and want them to win every single game, but more reality is setting in that they still need more chemistry building. They still need more repetitions during practice and you know, it's it's still a learning process that's going on there over there in Boulder. And if you don't understand that, you're going to try to criticize that team at every aspect you can. I'm trying not to do that on this video because these are things that was always there. These were things that was always ready to be learned and gained. It's just that Dion won so early. <laughs> he won within press conferences. He won against TCU. It set standards way too high. You feel me? They're on the not, the top 25 team already. Some people said it was going to take two or three years before their top 25, you know, um, best team in the world. They got that first year. So expectation is steadily rising high and high. And a lot of the naysayers, including myself, we're, we're looking at Deion Sanders team as a national champion team. And we got a whoa, steady, whoa, steady. I'm not a naysayer. I'm just saying I also, you know, cause the naysayers are using Deion team as a national team, uh champion type team. So they can criticize Deion with any loss or any wins. But me, I'm coming back to reality and understanding that they're not a national champion team yet. They're not a national championship team yet. You know what I mean? Because they still got factors they need to work on. But because we love Dion and we see the guys on Well Off Media, you know, Bucky's channel, YouTube channel, that is, and we're forever grateful. And we're already thinking, man, they're about to reach the mountaintops. You know what I mean? But uh, the little part of my brain says, you know, DJ Bless one fall back a little bit and give those boys time to grow and develop. You feel me? By year three, we should have these aspirations by year four, but we want them now. This is a what have you done for me lately type of environment we're in. And you know what? I'll take anything we get for Dion. If Dion wins six games or more and become bowl el eligible, that's historic situation he did over there in Colorado. And we should be grateful for that. But if we do end up winning damn near 10 games or more, then the party's still going to keep going. Either way, Dion will win. Either way, those guys over there in Boulder, they will win. I'm DJ Bless One. Love your family. Love your kids. Stay blessed.